live from the Coffee Con Studios. <laughs> it's Coffee Kevin. Thank you, Patricia. The rumors of my death are slightly exaggerated. I uh, had a cold, and yesterday was telling everyone, oh, stay home and, you know, forget it. Stay away from me. Um, I was even wearing a little face mask around my house. Um, but I'm better today and uh, better enough that uh, we're doing a clip. And I did get something really exciting yesterday, and I, I swear this had something to do with my rapid recovery. I got this coffee maker. Uh, this is a, a, a what, what the heck? It's called a Vinci. Vinci, <laughs> excuse me. Uh-oh, there he goes. He's, it might be a, you know, maybe there's a potential uh, ratings boost. <laughs> People pass around the web. There's a guy on Facebook Live right now who is probably not going to make it, but we'll see. He might. Um, I uh, I've uh, fooled people before about that. Okay. Um, and what is why am I so excited about this? Well, I'll tell you why I'm not excited. First, I'm not excited because it looks like a bunch of other coffee makers. I, you know, it's getting to the point where I can tell what. Uh, plant in China they made these things and uh, where they always are known for passing around the intelligence of one coffee maker manufacturer to another you know that long term that is a book by the way one of you uh, business uh, uh, students out there that is a book on the skullduggery that goes on between the what the companies who manufacture this stuff and the various uh, designers who are all unique. I mean, frankly, you know, all the coffee maker companies do have their own, uh, well, maybe not all of them, but most of them, though, anyway, have their own design staffs. But gosh darn it, this isn't a real common thing that I see the way this is laid out, and I think that it's almost a mold. However, um, there is one absolutely, in my opinion, brilliant thing, and I'm going to, Michael, if you can, if you're ready for it, I'm going to show everyone right at the beginning. You might as well have a reason for watching within the first couple of minutes. Uh, hearing about my cold. Can you switch to that? Look at that thing. Look at this. That is the spray head. And uh, that, to me, is a cool thing. I saw this. In fact, I think we had a clip on it. Are we okay? Hey, do we have the spray head yet? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are we? Okay, good. As long as everyone's happy. Um, the... Uh, Anyway, everything else about it is seems pretty routine. What's special about this spray head? Well, what's special about it, Pat, is that it is like a, an upside-down lawn sprinkler. It takes the water and it disperses it like that. Most the, the most important thing in well, the most important thing in brewing is to have the water in contact with the grounds the right amount of time and to have the uh, water at the right temperature during that time so that the grounds are extracted at the right temperature because there is a magical range of temperatures to extract coffee. And Can you give us that spin again? I'm sorry. This Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to get to the shot. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, Mike and I are in sync. Um, okay. And then... Uh, Not yet. Did you get it? Not not yet. Do you want me to do it again? Yes, I don't. Okay. See, Mike, do you, can you get the shot? Close. There we go. Finally. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, um, I forget what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, I've got this coffee maker in front of me, and we're 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 going to show it to you. And I'm actually going to brew coffee with it, even though this is not another not a review. I take thirty days to review something. Um, yeah, I'm not. I've had this for. 24 hours, literally. And uh, the uh, FedEx driver rang the doorbell, and I knew it was something important because he knows me, and he said, I know you. I knew you'd want me to ring. And uh, I came downstairs. I had, you know, my bathrobe on, and I had three days of not shaving. And I said, you know, he probably thought I was massively hungover. Uh, well, maybe I was a little, but uh, actually I just was uh, suffering from a cold. But I said, Great, fantastic, Greg. I will use this right away, and I did. Um, and I haven't taken its, tem its temperature. I took my temperature yesterday, but not the coffee makers. 
because uh, this is one of these coffee makers that's going to be very difficult to get in there. But I do have kind of a snaky thermometer that I will be able to use. But what's fantastic about the spinner thing is it actually, in spinning the water around, it makes sure all the grounds get equally soaked. Just like watering your lawn. You know, you just put those, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, hoses that have just little holes in them and, you know, you, you have to move them all over the place. Well, you can't, really can't get in there and move. When you're manually drip brewing, you can move because that's what the gooseneck kettles made that popular. Even a non-gooseneck kettle is fine for being able to you take your hand, you look at the grounds. I know this sounds really condescending, but I don't mean it to be. I mean it to be just, it's great analogy. It is exactly what we're trying to do internally and mechanize and the industry struggled with it for 20 years. Part of the reason is some of the people who've designed coffee makers, I swear, have never used one, and the or manual one at any rate. And the other thing is they there's a there is some comp, complexity in it because the simple let's uh, use an example the early Techniform. I realize they've changed it, uh, modified it, but. The early Techniform just had a really what amounted to a drip faucet. Wonderful coffee maker as far as getting the temperature perfect. Uh, it was perfectly in mid-center of what the industry asked for, but did not have a dispersion. Did not have a dispersion and did not and had less turbulence generated from their meth this method of dripping the coffee down. This coffee maker in its dispersion pattern is wider. And it, uh, theoretically anyway, we'll see what the coffee looks like when we start it. And it also has uh, the benefit of some turbulence generated from the way it's being dispersed. So it's just, I realize it's kind of a sprinkle. It's hardly a uh, power washing your grounds. Power washing your grounds isn't a bad idea. It's, I think we call that espresso. But it uh, is not perfect either because there is a fine line between too much turbulence and not enough. So anyway, this is all stuff, though, that you should know. You, the designer of a coffee maker struggles with and tries to figure out so that in, in attempting to automate what you can do with a Chemex or uh, a Melita brewer, you can do that w w with your own hands and a, and a, and a kettle. All, automating all that and getting it to work as well if not better, and certainly it's more consistent, is is actually a lot of work, and I, uh, I, it's my mission. I'm making it my mission to describe that. Now let's get some water and uh, make this uh, baby uh, make coffee for us. Okay, now uh, it is a standard uh, number four Melita filter, the old number four, and not the old number seven, and we uh, it has. Uh, I mean, there's. You know, we know this drill. Uh, we get this. I have pre-measured. Oh, let me tell you. In running it through its paces yesterday, I brewed 12 cups, which is the maximum. And uh, this coffee maker uses pretty much what I call uh, the uh, good housekeeping seal of approval cup a minute spec. This is something I swear good housekeeping created years ago uh, in their so-called coffee maker reviews, which by all appearances looks like they're just if you take an ad you get a uh, you get named in their uh, to go to list uh, and if they if they think differently let me know and if they have any proof of that I'd uh, let me know um, because I've never figured out what what why a coffee maker gets on their uh, their top uh, brewers list and gets their seal of approval but this is uh, the problem it, a cup a minute is, if it's 12 cups, is 12 minutes. Well, this takes about 10 minutes to make a full batch. 10 minutes while uh, less than 12, 10 minutes is a lot more than 6 minutes. And 6 minutes is pretty much the right on spec uh, for drip coffee. Uh, maybe you can go to 8 minutes with a real super coarse grind a la the Chemex. Um, and I might try that for a little bit larger batch, but instead what I did was just use the requisite SCA approval. Now, I, in fairness to Vinci, they don't claim that they're meeting that standard, 
uh, and they have, as far as I, I'm sure, they haven't submitted it yet for uh, approval for that standard. But that's that's the standard uh, industry at this time in history uh, regulation for coffee. A requisite is 55 grams of coffee to one liter of water, and so that's what I did. I brewed it with that, and uh, when I brewed that, this is all yesterday when I was um, in bed according to uh, what I promised Pat and my doctor. Um, this would be, uh, and then I get like seven cups approximately, a little over seven cups, almost eight cups. That's a fine amount of coffee for most people. Um, I, I'm sure there are times, yeah, for holidays when and maybe you don't care as much how the coffee tastes. I would never brew 12 cups in. Uh, there are a couple of coffee makers I would brew 12 cups in, but most of them I wouldn't. Um, and this one uh, I wouldn't uh, because it's too long. That's all. It's too long. What happens to coffee when you brew uh, more than six minutes is uh, when you're using a drip grind is you get a little bitterness in there, a little more than a little. And uh, it's just not, it doesn't hold up to it. So you want to get your, um, that, this will get it down to in the six minute contact range. And then uh, I used a little finer than uh, regular uh, drip grind, drip grind. So I went to uh, number five on my ditting, and, and don't pay attention to that. I shouldn't have done that yet, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to lift this now and put this in here. And of course, this is something that's really easy to do when you're not on camera, but my gosh, it looks like I did it okay. Um, I did. <laughs> and now I'm gonna try to get the rest of the gr grind particles to come out of the glass. Come on, you. All right, well, that's um, just about. And, okay, contact, we have ignition. Now, this coffee maker has another feature that I really like about it, and let me just get over here. Are you able to see it uh, from, uh, there we go. That's kind of a neat shot, isn't it? Okay, uh, so let's see, it's got this button here, and I always am for pushing this button, because this is a pre-infusion button, you know, I know you have a terrific sense of humor, Mike. Here we go. <laughs> you didn't plug it in. <laughs> I, I think I mentioned I was once on QVC and I tried to operate a coffee maker and it wasn't plugged in. And you know that was if I could survive that, I can survive it here. Are we plugged in on? We're not plugged in on this end either, though, Mike. That's beyond a sense of humor. That's downright mischievous. Okay. We're going to have to have HR talk to him. Okay, and then here we go. Uh, can you see this from the side? Can you get me a better shot of this so that we don't I have to repeat this? Uh, not. Uh, you need to tilt the mic a little bit higher and then just get up in this region right here. There you go. There you go. It's a much better shot. And don't pay no attention to the clock. They always flash 12 in my house. Okay, I'm going to press this, and it, everything is, I like this. I can, first of all, I'm colorblind and I can see the colors. Blue means off, red means on. That, I want to give uh, Vincey credit for that as well. Very nice, right at the start. And then we're going to brew. This is a pre-infusion button. I just always leave it on. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to use it. What it does is, it means, and we're going to time this a little bit, and then I'll tell you why it doesn't matter too much. Because there's almost a full minute. It's gonna, what it's going to do is get some hot water, spray it out onto the, onto the grounds, just enough to get them wet. And then it will shut off and let those, that water soak into those grinds, or grounds, I guess. <laughs> and that's important. That's a nice, it's called a pre-infusion stage. Everybody who does, everybody who does, uh, yeah, can we get that front shot, Mike? I just, I'm looking at this camera and I feel like I'm alone. Thank you. And then, uh, I mean, just punch it up. Thank you. 
and uh, th- that um, if we during that minute that really especially for f- super fresh coffee like this and this is fresh this is the coffee uh, this is from Dunn Brothers I've been keeping it in the uh, in the uh, canisters that I have forgive me I'll put in the uh, text below what it's called uh, specifically and then it, it keeps the coffee fresh these grounds will f- will will come to bloom they're so fresh and that's a major feature of this coffee maker too and a number of coffee makers have that feature but I'm glad that they put it on board this and then it will um, have a chance to bloom and then settle and the important thing about that is the rest of the water goes through pretty much chug 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 and that water will not it will, it will not rebloom anyway and it just depends on the water being having bloomed and being back down again if it doesn't have a chance to settle after blooming then uh, you're still not getting perfectly good contact so it improves the contact again another benefit to improve uh, in effect uh, extraction to facilitate a better extraction a more thorough extraction and you can tell it's not a lot of wa- oh I'm sorry hang on I've done something wrong and it just shut off to tell me guess what I didn't put the water in and here's what I have to do I'll start it again one liter You know, I may not be the best. Um, I may not be the best expert, the most knowledgeable expert making YouTube clips, but I'm certainly the most absent-minded. You gotta hand me that. All right. All right, and let's get this in here. And again, the awkwardness is doing it. All right, it's off, but it's just. I tried to turn it on first. All right. One liter is the amount of water. And now let's try this again. Press the button to make it go red. Are we on the uh, correct, uh, uh, the, how about the side shot, Mike? The one looking right at this, the, there we go. I press that to make it go red, and now I press this to make it go red. And then I will start the timer when I hear it kick in. And I think I'm hearing it. It is heating right now. And what happens is the water flow naturally makes it spin. Unfortunately, you can't see it. You know, in a a perfect world, no one asked me. And, of course, I come up with things that cost a lot of money. At least the coffee maker companies have told me that, that they can't get any return on. But... I just think it'd be cool to have a little window where I can see all this, but you know, then again, it gets steamed up. It's not not a perfect world, okay. But there we go, and uh, you know, we it will it will it's got a pretty good uh, what I've seen so far, and again, not a review, but initial impressions. Uh, nice. See, now it shuts off. That's that's good. It gives a healthy amount of water. Sometimes they just like give a little sprinkle of water. You need a little more than a sprinkle. You can tell, I will say this, you can tell that the person who designed it had at least brewed using a Chemex at least once during their life. And I, um, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to see that level of thought went into it. Um, you know, it's so nice to see a spick and span brewer uh, it's been at least a week since I've seen another one. So uh, let's see. Uh, we're now at. Uh, it's gonna. I, I. I'm assuming it gives, and I'll measure this during the view process. Between 30 and 30 seconds to a minute is what it should be. And uh, as far as I know, pre-infusion. Well, pre-infusion one might say is attributable to Alita Benz. <laughs> we invented, who's credited with inventing drip auto, uh, manual drip brewing, but the first automatic drip brewer I've ever seen that had pre-infusion was 
Not a commercial machine, the Chemex. <laughs> the Chemex Automatic, the original one. Anyway, let's keep uh, looking at this. This is, um, it's just going to chug away a little bit. Now, let me tell you some other things. What is? What else is it claiming on it? I, I, let me go through the book. I did this the other day, and I think people liked it because they, for one thing, I proved I can actually read an instruction manual. I never, of course, read these things. These are for my attorney, Sid Heller, to read. And um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm surprised Sid hasn't come over lately for a cup of coffee. Thank you for uh, the purchase of the Vinci Auto Pour. I think it's always welcome to the Vinci family. I like that. Vinci's Auto Pour over, featuring its innovative rotary dispersion technology with a pre soak feature replaces what was a manual time-consuming brewing method, hand brewing pour over coffee, and achieves the same balanced smooth pour over coffee flavor without all the manual effort. Fair enough. Whether you are a pour over connoisseur, a drip machine user, I would call myself, or just appreciate a good cup of coffee, I think I'm all three of those things, so they're right up my alley. We know you're going to love the smooth, delicious results you get from a Vinci Auto pour over. Okay, well, it's not a whole lot of content, but at least gives us an idea. Ah, what is pour over coffee? Well, we, you and I already know what it is, but let's see what they say it is. Coffee enthusiasts and baristas agree that pour over coffee brewing method is one of the best ways to get a smooth, balanced cup of coffee. I would agree with that. By slowly pouring heated, perfectly heated, fresh water, perfectly heated, I want to point out, I, I need to prove that with uh, a thermometer. Um, even today, I won't know. Either would I, there are some giveaways uh, to how the coffee will taste, but I'm not going to uh, commit to that. Pour over coffee is extracted in a more precise manner, resulting in a smoother, bolder, and more evenly extracted cup of coffee. Mm. Well, yes, I would agree. The way they're extracting it should, I think, is a reasonable conjecture that it's going to be more precise, smoother, bolder, more evenly extracted. I would agree with those things. Coffee bloom, science behind coffee bloom. The initial reaction when hot water is comes into contact with freshly roasted ground coffee, which is what we're using, wetting the grounds for the first time. Yes, initially exposed to hot water, CO2 gas escapes and bubbles out. The problem is, if carbon dioxide gas escaping means water isn't able to get in as efficiently. Yes, correct. So this gives that chance. Okay, I'm skipping a little bit here and there. Getting to know your automatic pour over. I'm uh, not sure I want to get to know it that well. Let's see. Blooming, cleaning, all, all looks right. Uh, red and blue bloom. Okay, let's timer. Are you really going to use the timer for this? I mean, I guess you can. If you got a, I guess if you have like a 6 a.m. flight and you want to make sure it, you get up at 3 and just at midnight you pre set it up and you can do that. You could also just hit on. I guess it's smarter to do that that way. Automatic pa pause and pour. Please don't use this feature. Wait the six minutes uh, for this much coffee. Yeah, I get 10 minutes. Is is a long time, but that 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 you're, you're going to get a really strong cup of coffee, and the last person's going to get a really weak cup of coffee. I guess that punishes the person who doesn't get up as early. Something to that. Carafe uh, carafe is kept warm for 90 minutes. Oh, by the way, it's kudos to them. It's glass and it's a carafe, uh, heated carafe. I have no problem with that. 90 minutes is a long time. I don't think after 90 minutes I'm going to want to drink the coffee. Um, on any coffee maker. It's not their fault. It's just not... Okay. Uh, it doesn't have any tips that I can find about... Uh, well, it does have standard measurement of water. A coffee to water is one level tablespoon to five ounces of water. Uh, for a boulder brew, up to two tablespoons for five ounces of water. I don't, you know, I don't know what that means really, but I would, I would say 55 grams to one liter is pretty good. Oh, we can tell it's turning into steam now, but it's still spinning around hopefully, and uh, we'll see what the grounds look like. Uh, that's really important to, to telling if the feature, how well the feature works. 
And it's going to be a little over six cups, yeah. Not quite seven. Six, not even really six cups for that matter. But I would not measure this because there's some loss. Put a liter in to get six cups. Six cups is 30 ounces. That's what? Certainly uh, five, five, six ounce cups. That's, a, that's about enough for, for a couple in the morning. That's, to me, just about perfect in my family. So let's see. Uh, it doesn't, I don't think it beeps when it's done, so we're just going to have to take a chance. It's going to steam up a lot. And then let's, uh, this isn't really alone the most important part. And as soon as it cools down a little bit, yeah, I get it. Ah, this is what I want to see. Michael, the overhead shot's probably going to be your baby for this. Oh, you're already, you're way ahead of me. Okay. Can we, uh, where's that camera? Is it right? That's no, right here. And I think you're going to want to go in a little bit and uh, go way in. Go, in, go in as close as you can go, my friend. And there we are. Ah, there we go. Now that's, that's, a, that I will say, I'm very impressed. That is a really nice, very nice, uh, I know that it's blowing out, meaning it's there. But, and I wish we could, um, I wish, uh, back up just a little bit on the overhead. Thank you. I, I'm trying to tilt it to get the light to pick it up. And to be fair, Michael asked for another light in beforehand, and I said, no, it's not in the budget today. But here we go. Um, we actually, I couldn't retrieve it in time. Um, but it, it, looks, it looks really good. That's a nice, let's put it this way, not a review, <laughs> but it's a really good sign. That's very uh, encouraging. Now, um, all I can say is, yeah, it's, it's doing it. Uh, that's, a, that's the best I would hope to see in, uh, let's put it this way, if I had used manual drip brewing, I'd be very happy that that was my end result. And if you go to a cafe or you do your own manual drip brewing, I would think you'd be very happy to see that. It doesn't, it doesn't look like there's any spots that have, have, well, there's no dry grounds, complete absence of dry grounds. I do not see one. Also, it looks like the side got, uh, you can tell there was a little bit of the foam up and just a little bit of grinds, uh, grounds uh, that went up on the sides. But otherwise, really nice pattern. Um, just slightly, and this is more than you can probably see, but it's slightly convex in the center. Now that indicates to me that the, 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 this got a little more water than the middle, but maybe not, and certainly it's, it's overall very even. I mean, I'm sure all the grounds got very saturated for the duration of, of uh, the brewing. So both the pre-infusion, that's a, that's a factor of two things. The pre, you know, we can go back to... Uh, I'm going to put this down. That's a, that's a, that's a, both features that it's claiming are working well together. This is the pre-infusion, the pre-soak, as they're calling it, feature is working just beautifully. And uh, this, which I, I said, A, it's putting, a, that means it's combined putting enough water over the grounds. They're dispersed properly. That water's dispersed properly. It sounds like a dragon or something. Uh, oh, thinking about getting me. Let me close this. Uh, well, then I get a shot of this, Mike. This little baby too is. Uh, can you see that from uh, from the other camera? I know you've got to set it up. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have it? Ah, yes. There we go. That shot there is what I wanted to show. That shows... Here, let me uh, turn it on the side so that we can all see it better. There we go. This guy right here, this is working fine. 
the lawn sprinkling system is upside down, is working really well and, uh, and getting the saturation that you want. A lawn, you should be so lucky with your lawn. Actually, we're getting a nice sprinkling on the lawn from all the rain we've had lately here in the Midwest. So, um, let me quickly, I had a towel down here that we're going to want because I, in my enthusiasm to talk about this, I got a little bit of excess uh, coffee uh, on the table here and, you know, it's, I'm going to have relatives over soon and, okay. Uh, this, it looks uh, fantastic for that. Now, let's do a little bit of a, a taste and uh, I, for a couple of reasons. One of them is I haven't really, as I mentioned, I have not put this uh, through any kind of extensive testing late, uh, yet. And the other thing is I, uh, I really don't uh, trust my taste buds right now. But at least we can uh, this coffee, by the way, I, I started to mention it. It's Dunn Brothers. This is their Sumatra uh, and a really nice coffee. And uh, let's see if I can. There's Michael's coffee. There's Patricia's coffee. And um, here is mine. And, well. Oh, I can tell you, even though I, I supposedly wouldn't trust my uh, my sinuses either. My sinuses are, are clear, by the way. I always sound like this a little bit. Oh, it's really got a nice scent, nice fragrance. Well, I can tell it's a scent, uh, Sumatra. Uh, that's a good thing because I like Sumatra. It's my, probably my favorite go-to bean. And also, um, I've had this coffee before several times, and it does. It is consistent um, with it overall. Having said that, uh, that's remember that's at one liter. I also need to do a final measurement. Uh, well, a measurement before I publish anything. And that would be to measure the temperature of that water as it's coming out and spraying the coffee. That's ideal. Well, there's two temperatures that I want to check. That temperature, the second temperature is below it um, when it actually is in there mixing with the, the grounds. And uh, those temperatures, believe it or not, are not identical. They're seldom identical. And, they, uh, and what's interesting is sometimes they vary quite a bit. And then I have to make a judgment call on what we call that temperature. Where is it? Well, we know what it's brewing at, but that's not. The vast majority of designs are made checking the temperature as the water is coming out of the spray head. Anyway, that's probably more than you want to know right now. But that's uh, it's interesting. A little update on Coffee Con. We've uh, we've got a, a sponsor that we're uh, talking to, and if we get the sponsor to agree and sign. Um, we will be announcing our LA show. I, the sponsor is actually in China right now because they're working on a new coffee maker. They're their coffee maker manufacturer, but I'm supposed to hear from that person any day now. <laughs> and, uh, that's the last time I called them to check. I actually made an accidental phone call from my cell phone. These phones are so, so, uh, persistent now. They actually seem to make phone calls on their own because I don't still know how it happened. I wasn't near the phone when it started dialing, but evidently, I don't know, maybe a cat touched it or something. Uh, but that uh, that will be eager to announce that, and um, we uh, are looking forward to making that announcement because I love to do Coffee Con. I love to come to Coffee Con, and you see coffee makers like this, and you learn how to use them ideally, and you learn all about farmers, and actually there's a new effort. A lot of uh, producers of coffee, farmers of coffee, are contacting us and looking. They want to meet consumers as well, and Coffee Con looks like a great way to do it. And uh, kind of, I, I hate to put it this way, but make it direct. How's that? Direct contact, dir true direct trade. Well, not that they're going to be selling you green beans, but they are um, going to be 
pitching their copies and getting you to do taste tests. Uh, it's getting close to Halloween, of course. So I really, uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to that. I'm Coffee Kevin, and I uh, will be talking to you in a couple of days, hopefully, and with even a clearer voice. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>